How's it going folks? In this video I will be talking about 10 major starter tips for your success in the Crystal Warrior game mode. Stay tuned at the end for a bonus special tip. Also, um, these tips might carry over to Horizon XI, if you are subscribed for that Horizon XI content by the way. These tips will increase in importance as we go, so let's get right into it. But first, I must humbly request you to subscribe and like this video. I am very close to 1k subs, that is about a little bit less than 100 subs away, and I already qualify for the uh, 4,000 watch hours of all my 600 plus, 650 plus videos of the past several years. So please, please subscribe and like this video so I can get to that milestone of making some money. Auto attack that subscribe button with the quickness of a hornet needle, if you please. Tip number one, plugin recommendations. I recommend you change your default.txt script uh, address shown here with at least these three add-ons, find, checker, and hxui. Fortunately for you all, if you use the cat's eye loader and installer, then you already have these downloaded for your convenience. You just need to put them in your default.txt script. It is under the folder shown here. The checker add-on shows the exact level of the monster you are checking. It is crucial to have as much information as possible about the monster you are fighting, especially for being uh, Beastmaster and charming and fighting purposes. Spoiler alert, I'll be talking more about Beastmaster in tip number 6. The find add-on helps you locate items you have on your character and where they are. Simply type in slash find and then the item name and it will tell you if you have and where you have this item in your storage. The HXUI add-on is recommended because you can see on the fly your XP bar, your current inventory capacity, your current gill, and much more. You can also configure the size and location for these elements as you desire. Check out the link in the description for a video I made talking about this add-on. Fortunately for you, the Cat's Eye Launcher already has the HXI, HXUI in the downloaded so you, are, so you don't have to worry about the installation section of the video. Uh, I would recommend maybe going to about the halfway point to see the configuration and the, the look of the add-on for the HXUI. Tip number two, XP bonuses for grouping and XP rings. Cat's Eye's Crystal Warrior game mode is a challenge for many reasons, but one is the XP grind. Crystal Warrior is era accurate XP, that means without the bonuses that came later in retail. However, there are bonuses that you can get by grouping up with other Crystal Warrior players. Without trusts, which is what we'll talk about in tip number three, players can earn a 10%, 20%, or 30% bonus to their XP depending on the level when grouping. Also, XP rings are also available, but the bonuses have it capped at lower than, lower than retail amounts. Uh, for Cat's Eye players, see the uh, image right here. Tip number three is level sync and trusts. So along the same lines as number two, also because I wanted to uh, make this list 10 instead of nine, are the level syncs and trusts. You can level sync at level 15 on this server, so that means you cannot level sync to someone under the level of 15, but the party member can exist at level number 15. So in case you are wondering, you can have a member at level 14, but sync to level 15. You cannot sync to level 14, but a person that is 14 can exist in the party they would just get an XP penalty uh, based on the, the level of the, the main party, which is 15. Also, trusts can be attained at 15. You can do one of the new custom quests in a starter town, which includes a cool custom solo fight. So at level 15, you can get one trust. Each town will give you a single predetermined trust. At level 40, you can do a third quest in the trust quest series. That gives you access to a, uh, to call a second and final trust, but also opens up the option to get most of the various obtainable trusts in the game. Tip number four is Flower Girls plus Fields of Gr Grounds and Fields of Valor. Uh, you might be asking yourself why do these two why are these two on the same tip, but I will explain. Flower Girls are the ones that give you the ability to exit the Mog House from a different zone than that which you entered. Uh, for all four. For all four, including Juno, you need to have an Amaryllis for Bastok, a Marguerite for Sandoria, and a Lilac for Winterst, and a Yellow Rock for Juno. Yellow Rocks can be bought at the Goldsmith in Bastok markets, I think they're like 1.5k or something, and the flowers can be purchased from a shop in Upper Juno near the Battalia Downs exit. Why is this a tip for Crystal Warrior specifically instead of just basic Final Fantasy XI? Well, here's why. 
one great source of early XP and gil is Fields of Valor and Grounds of Valor. However, in the Crystal Warrior game mode, you can only do one page per zone per day. So, what I would recommend to you in the case of Bastok, for example, when you are on the job, that is getting XP from the starter zones, which is basically 1 to 10, or maybe a little bit higher depending on the book page you get. Um, do a quick page outside of Bastok Mines, for example. Run inside uh, and exit from North Bastok from your walk house. I'm sorry, exit uh, uh, Port Bastok from your walk house and go right to North Gustaberg. That, and you can do a page right outside North Gustaberg and one each game day. So then, Basically, if you are close to the end of a game day, maybe you have about uh, eight minutes or something, you can go do one in South Gustaberg, run in, get your uh, get your mock house, exit out of there quickly to uh, North Gustaberg, get the page right outside of there, and do another um, book page right before the next game game day changes. And basically, it's just a quick way to get to another zone that has a another book right by, so before you can get in another book before the end of a game day. There are surely many other areas where you can go and back and forth each game day and utilizing zones that have Fields of Valor and Grounds of Valor books nearby each other. But this is time saving for getting the opposite side of town quickly in case you happen to be close to the end of a game day and want to work in a quick pair of Fields of Valor. Tip number five, careful of multi-floor zones. This is a quick tip. Due to the reality of private servers, pathing and detection of monsters is such that it is possible to be detected and aggroed through walls and floors that would normally be safe in retail. I am not sure if there is a remedy for this, uh, or it could just be the nature of a private server, so keep that in mind. When entering a dangerous area, be aware of there being high-level monsters right nearby, or right through a wall, or right through a floor, and possibly get your sneak and invisible up as soon as possible, which leads into tip number six. And tip number six, sub-job recommendations, that is Dancer, Red Mage, Beast, and Thief. These utility sport job choices will come in handy for your general adventuring and leveling. Dancer, at level 25, gives you Spectral Jake, which is a sneak and invisible that is insta-cast because it's a job ability, keeping you safe in your adventures. Also, you can heal yourself, give yourself uh, like buffs and... Uh, for example, Drain Samba or Aspire Samba. It's a very useful support job. Red Mage at 25, for the same reasons, for the most part, healing yourself, buffing yourself, maybe some minor debuffing, but also at uh, level 25, Sneak and Invisible. Uh, however, the problem with Red Mage is there is some casting time involved with Sneak and Invisible, it's not instant, and the potential for mag magic aggro nearby, so keep that in mind. Thief is quite an obvious choice for subjob. Thief with Treasure Hunter is gives huge benefits, but seeing as Crystal Warrior will have to do all of their farming and crafting themselves, th that is, Treasure Hunter could be priceless. Beast, this is certainly an option for... Beast is certainly not an option for everyone, but if you like Beastmaster and you want to consider this as an option, uh, Beast as a sub-job will let you charm uh, EM and DC and easy prey mobs with relative ease and success. Uh, this will allow you to add a free member to your party for tanking purposes that's useful for Thief and Mages, or also just add some extra damage. Uh, charming success depends on your Charisma stat that you have uh, currently on your main job, not actually the Charisma of the Beastmaster main job. So, Beastmaster main job level does not matter for Charming, it is about the Charisma stat that you have currently, which can be augmented by gear or food. Number 7 is Storage Space. Uh, inventory space will be a major issue right from the start, you only start off with 30 slots. You will get extra Mog Wardrobe slots as you unlock advanced jobs, but also as you complete missions and expansion storyline quests. But also you need to consider the initial inventory space of 30 slots. This can only be increased by doing the Gobby Bag quest in Lower Juno. This tip is basically to familiarize yourself with the items you need to finish these quests and make sure you do not throw them away or sell them uh, and save them for these quests. You may get some free from caskets or just by crafting, but you have. But if you but you can save the money from a whole craft by, that you need to do just for this reason, if you happen to acquire one of these items and just not drop it. So familiarize yourself with the items you need for these quests so you don't have to worry about leveling a craft all the way up just for this one item in this one quest. Tip number eight, unbreakable slash regular Crystal Warrior uh, downgrading quests. If you find yourself getting super frustrated with dying and deleveling to one too many times, you can downgrade yourself to a regular Crystal Warrior by doing a quest in Mora. 
It will require a Faded Crystal obtained from a Crag Telepoint to do the quest, and you must be level 15. I did it quite early because I knew I died a lot in this game. For example, um, I died at level 4 or level 5 or something, and just that little bit was frustrating enough for me to want to do this. So as soon as I got to level 15, I made my way to Mohora, and I did the quest, and I don't regret it at all because I've died several times since then. I know me, I know my limitations, I know how I play, I die a lot. It was a good choice for me. So, uh, if you want details on how to do that, I have a video in the description for me doing that, and you can check that out. Tip number nine is efficient traveling. This one is important. Traveling quickly and efficiently will save you time and potential death and headaches, and just basically make your Final Fantasy XI experience more pleasant. First sub-tip is get all your available outposts every day, as many as you can every week. The week changes at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time and 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday mornings. These will allow you to travel to any outpost you have unlocked from your hometown and eventually from an NPC in Juno once you've completed that level 30 quest uh, in Juno. The second sub-tip, set your home point at a place where you need to be often and the place that is hardest to get at that moment, hardest to get to at that moment. For example, if you do not have any of the outposts near Juno, and you expect to be needed in Juno often, set one of your set your home point at one of the home points in Juno. If you happen to have the uh, West Zaruda Baruda outpost, consider not having your home point in Windurst, because you always you already have an option to get back to Windurst easily just by using the home point or using sorry using the outpost warp. Also, keep in mind that if there is a Fields of Valor or Grounds of Valor book nearby, you can spend your tokens that you've earned, um, actually as notes I think, you can spend your notes to repatriate yourself to your hometown. So that is one reason that maybe you choose not to have a home point in Juno because you can always go outside and, uh, and check on the Fields of Valor book and automatically repatriate yourself to your home nation. Third sub-tip, get your warp ring as soon as possible. This is 5k conquest points, but worth every little bit. You never know when you need to save your own life or save yourself 30 minutes of running. Get this home point, or get this warp ring as soon as possible. It's 5k points, but you'll acquire that 5k points um, well many times over in your, in your adventures. So don't be afraid to spend your first 5k on this after you get your XP ring, of course. Sub-tip number four. Use your Providence Ring liberally. This Providence Ring is the one you get right from the start of the game. Um, it is the place where you start when you're in your little uh, your crystalline uh, crystalis, and right before you warp to your uh, initial uh, initial quest NPC and whatever uh, whatever zone it sends you to, depending on your home nation. Uh, this Providence Ring will uh, warp you to Providence, and once you're inside, you will you can talk to the NPC to go back to Vanity. It says, and it will put you to wherever that starting quest NPC warps you out of the starter area. And um, for example, in uh, for Bastok starters, it warps you to the top of a rock right outside the zone for Dangruff Wadi. So that is a very useful way to get back to close to your home nation, or if you just want to go to Dangruff Wadi, and, uh, for example, or want to go right to that close area, or use your Providence Ring, warp back to Vanadil for a way to get another, another way to travel fast. Also, keep in mind that the Providence Ring is a custom uh, DAT modified uh, item. So if you are using Windower to play uh, this server, you will need to make sure you have the proper DAT modifications to, to that file. If you're using the, uh, basically if you're using Windower, the item will show up as a level 99 item on your screen and you won't even be able to equip it. So uh, what you'll wanna do is either use the, the launcher to start up the sheet of four Windower with all the proper DAT files, um, and that, then that way the uh, the file will be correct and you'll be able to use it like normal. Or you'll have to jump through some hoops and get that that file proper um, properly um, updated uh, if you're using Windower. Tip number ten is the major one: making gill. As a crystal warrior, you cannot use the AH. You cannot trade with others. You cannot use the bazaars. The only way to get gear and supplies is to find them in caskets from monster drops from various normal uh, Final Fantasy XI quests or Crystal Warrior specific quests and make them yourself or buy them from a shop. The latter two will require lots of gill. 
In order to get gil, you must kill enemies for gil drops or items that you get from the from the drops and sell to the shop, or do quests around towns, including the news Crystal Warrior quests. I'll leave a link in the description to view all the published Crystal Warrior quests. Um, those are the specific ones that are made just for this uh, game mode that only Crystal Warriors can do. It is a an option to get extra gil that you wouldn't normally be able to get uh, with the main game. But also you can take a look at the spreadsheet I made several months ago for the Horizon XI server that also applies here. It includes many low level and easy quests to do for low end gear and gil. Don't be afraid to NPC an item that you don't need, but be sure you don't need it before you do. And finally, a bonus tip, which is tip number 11, from the very special, the very famous champ on our cat size server. He says, don't let your HP hit zero. So, there you go. Thanks champ, I appreciate you. Don't let your HP hit zero. All right, folks, that'll do it for this video. I hope that you uh, have experienced some joy with this. I hope that uh, these tips um, will help you. I hope there are some of them that you actually didn't know that you might find useful. Also, um, please like and subscribe, and please help me get to that uh, the sweet, sweet uh, YouTube money, please. I would appreciate it. Also, if you stayed around this long, here's a special uh, surprise for you. Uh, there is a special uh, announcement coming out for the server tomorrow. I will be making a video about it. So subscribe and, and maybe even uh, hit that uh, bell button for uh, for updates and uh, alerts when I post a new video because tomorrow I was told by a, uh, a significant source, I can't reveal the source, but uh, it's, a, it's a reliable source that's for sure, that there is a special announcement coming out tomorrow that is Friday, June 23rd for the Cat's Eye server. Anyway, uh, keep an eye on my channel and uh, the Discord for Cat's Eye uh, for those updates and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.